Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you enjoyed the last video. This video is going to be a, basically a continuation of the last. It's going to be part two or mostly to do with the clutch change. So uh, if you like this type of stuff, please like, subscribe to the videos, and maybe leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the next part of this video. So one of the other things you'll have to do is take off this shift linkage. One bolt goes through this end and tightens down, which kind of clamps this together. So this goes onto those splines fairly easily. I don't want to put it back on because it actually isn't that easy to get off. Basically this goes onto the splines, the bolt tightens it down so it can't go anywhere. So you kind of want to mark where it goes in the splines easily enough. It uh, has a little notch there. And then on this part it has that little dimple. So basically that dimple lines up with the very end of that little line there. So that's how you know where it goes back on. Makes it easy. You have to take that off because to get this cover off this has to be out of the way. Also there's this bolt that you can't get to unless you want to do that. Alright so one more thing I usually do with uh, anything that has quite a few different bolts like there's all these bolts are all for just this one cover. So what I'll often do is I'll get a piece of cardboard and I'll kind of outline this thing, just make a weird shape and then just kind of put the bolts where they go on this, on the cardboard down here. So you kind of know, oh this bolt that's in this part of the cardboard goes up on this section, wherever you draw it. But for this bike, all of the bolts are pretty much the same. There's two, two different sizes. There's the smaller ones and the longer ones. The longer ones pretty much go anywhere. You know, all the ones are closer to the mounting where it mounts are the short bolts, any ones that come out here, so pretty much, not very many, there's pretty much any other ones on this section, this surface, are all the tall ones. How many is there? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so there's five. There's five, and they all pretty much go on this section. The rest are all small, and they're all equal. Again, motorcycle companies don't do quite the same things as car companies. They don't need to. They have a lot more open space for things and again they try to make it so they can make a billion of these bolts if they can only if they make a billion of these instead of having to have six different sizes they will because it's cheaper anyway just wanted to share that with you so there's a couple other quick things that are a pain you gotta watch out for this I'm not sure what that's for it's probably I was gonna say it's a safety neutral switch but I actually think it's for like a hall fix sensor for engine because that goes down in here um, and I think it goes underneath this little tray along here and then to this sensor right here which I believe just hangs out kind of right here so I think it's a Hall effect sensor for the engine um, other than that this here's the clutch pack the basket um, I believe all you have to do is pretty much undo these bolts this pops off this part pops off you pretty much take off all this crap um, and you replace it with what comes in the kit. Instead of having this diaphragm spring clamping all that down, you'll have uh, a bunch of springs just in place right here. And with that kit, as I've shown in past videos, if you haven't watched those, maybe go watch those first. I talked about it. But basically all it does is it has two options for springs. So you can put uh, one for whatever, I can't remember the clamping force. There's another set for another clamping force, and then if you alternate, there's a third clamping force. So you can have three different clamping forces, one stock, one's medium, one's high, depending on your uh, preference and or engine modification. So obviously the higher horsepower applications, you're gonna want higher clamping force to make sure they don't slip. So for me, I'm not gonna go with the lowest one because I want a little bit more. I'm gonna go with the medium because I don't have a ton of extra mods for this engine. Um, so yeah, when you take off this whole thing, I don't have a spare, a second, uh, uh, whatever you call these things, gasket, which I'll probably have to go get. I didn't rip this one, so I might be able to reuse it, and I'll just uh, hold it down with some uh, sill glide or maybe even some gasket maker. I'll just use it to hold it down, and then I'll just stick it back on. The other thing that's annoying is this little part, this oil reservoir, has this little thing that kind of connects to um, this cover. And that makes it hard to get out. I had to kind of like squeeze it out, drop it down, pop it out. So it might get a, be a pain to get back in. 
Um, I also had to take off that cover, which is basically just the cover for this rear set. Um, I'm the kind of person that really likes seeing all this stuff more open. I don't know if I'm going to put that back on. I'll probably put this one back on, but there's another one that goes right in here. And the only thing I can think of it actually doing is making it look better here. Um, and maybe a little bit of air can go in here and then it forces air to get to the rear cylinder. Because obviously the front cylinder is going to be able to easily get air because it's the front of the bike. The rear one, not as much. So I was thinking maybe that thing kind of scoops air and funnels it to get into the back side of these fins. So that's the only thing I can think of. That is that part right there. I like it look, I like it without it more. It actually looks way cooler because you get to see more of the engine. This side, you can't really see much of the engine because again, it's these, uh, the tubes for the push rods are in there. But on the other side, if you don't have that metal chunk, if you don't have this, you can see kind of the entire, you can see the V-twin really nice. It looks really good. I'm really worried that that actually is a functional piece and used to keep on, keep uh, air flowing to the rear cylinder, but I'm not sure. I might look into that and we'll see. The other thing I was thinking about taking off is this. I don't want to completely take it off, but I was thinking about trimming it up. I don't know, I'm gonna have to look underneath there and see what how it all works and what all connects to what. But I would actually like to cut maybe a hole. I was thinking about doing this whole thing, but that might be too big. Uh, but cutting part of this so I can see the uh, front sprocket. We'll see if I actually get to that point. I don't know. Anyway, I've showed this in another video too, and I did explain it. Again, if you haven't seen that video, go back. It's I think it's the carbon fiber parts video or something, or parts, 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 parts. So if you haven't seen that and you want a little bit better of an explanation of what this all is, you can go watch it there. But that is basically what I'm taking out. So this is kind of the instructions and uh, I think it has the clamping forces of the various springs which I'll have to go over. Again, there you go, has these gold springs and then it has the orange springs. I can't remember which ones are which. I believe what I'm doing is doing the alternating pattern. Um, but basically, I undo these bolts, so this, these bolts will come out, that little ring there will come out, this will come out, and I believe this comes out as well. I think that's the pressure plate on this. Yeah, and then that bearing on the inside will too. This thing has that bearing, its own bearing. It's got its own pressure plate, which is this part, and it's got all that stuff. So all I have to do is unbolt this, this kind of pops out, and I bolt that all back in. And that's all. The next MT-01 upload, I'll be focusing on the undertail and the exhaust side of the bike to finish it off before summertime. Thank you guys very much for watching, hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more in the future. And uh, again, if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, just leave a comment down below and uh, we'll try to respond if we can.